Hi folks, thanks for stopping by. If you watched the last video, you saw where I took these boards that were in the rough, originally about an inch and an eighth or an inch and a sixteenth, planed them down and got a smooth surface, so now they're an inch, they're flat and square, and we're ready to start cutting joinery, so that's what we'll be doing in this video, working on our dovetails. So the first step in the process, now that they're flattened, is going to be to set my marking gauge to the thickness of our pin board, and I'll end up doing this for all of the boards. This particular marking gauge um, is just a wheel style. It's made by Veritas. It's relatively inexpensive, and it works great. I start out by lightly scoring um, and then coming back with a much heavier cut. It's a lot easier to get accurate results by just making that first cut nice and light. And here on the tailboard, I'll go around all four sides, and the reason for that will become apparent here in a bit. On an off note, here's another great look at the shimmery surface that a hand plane can leave. So I don't cut my dovetails entirely by hand. I have a, uh, a cheap magnetic guide that I picked up several years ago off of Amazon. I use it to start my cut. I use a 1 and 8 ratio most of the time, um, and then I finish it by hand. Now, a lot of purists are going to take issue with the fact that I use a jig to, to start my cut, but in my mind, it's no different than using a shooting board to true up the end of a of a board to get it square. Using a jig in the shop, um, at least in my mind, is not the same as using a power tool if, if you're trying to be a hand tool purist. Which it is important to note that I'm not a hand tool purist. I have power tools. I enjoy using them, but uh, there really is nothing quite like cutting joinery by hand. Here you'll see that I'm being careful not to go below my marking gauge line. Um, if you do end up doing that, it's not like it's going to ruin the joint, but you will end up with, uh, with gaps to fill later. So now it's time to make the shoulder cuts, and I start out by using an inch wide chisel just to establish um, a kerf for my saw to ride in. Now I'll come in with a uh, small marking knife and just kind of clear the waste out. This probably isn't necessary, but I always feel like I get a better result in doing it this way. You could also just do this with your chisel. So I got a pretty good result right off of the saw, but I always feel like it's beneficial to come in with a chisel and just clean out that interior corner to get the gunk out um, later. That'll ensure that the joint sits nice and properly. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but I actually still have my knife line um, from the marking gauge, and I'll leave that and come back in a little bit later. I'm also undercutting the inside of the joint just a bit. Um, there are a couple reasons for that. Number one, nothing apart from the edges of the dovetail are gonna be visible from the exterior of the joint. Uh, number two, this is gonna give the wood some area to compress into. And number three, it's gonna give the glue a little bit of area to compress into so that it doesn't swell the wood too badly when I go to glue things up. Now here I'm just cutting the waste out in between the dovetails. I have an inexpensive uh, coping saw from the Blue Big Box store. And I'm just coming in, and I'm not trying to get directly on my marking gauge line. I'm just trying to get it close um, so that I can come back in with a chisel um, and get right up on my line. But uh, I've found that I don't enjoy chiseling all the waste out. It seems to go a lot quicker, and I get cleaner results by removing the bulk with a coping saw. <laughs> And I apologize for the shaky camera angle here. I thought it would be a, a good idea to put the camera on the bench. And while my bench does fantastic dealing with uh, forces along its length, anytime I'm doing sort of lateral forces across it, uh, I do get a little bit of shake. So sorry if you get motion sickness. Uh -huh. 
And as I mentioned earlier, now it's time to chisel out the waste. Um, it may be hard to tell here, but I'll actually start my cut uh, perpendicular to the shoulder of the board, and then I will bring my chisel in just a tick to slightly undercut the joint, just like I did with the side of the shoulder earlier. And there you can see the tails, all cleaned up and ready to go with all the waste removed. Next we'll be moving on to the pin boards, and unfortunately I did not show the marking process. I plan on doing another uh, dovetail video, perhaps a little bit more in depth um, in the near future. But what I'm doing here is I had laid my tail board across my pin board and traced out the marking and I'm just taking a square um, and extending my lines where often my pencil won't get right into the corner and then I'm just carrying the line around the front and marking the waist so that I know which side to keep my saw on as I make my cuts. Unlike when I'm cutting the tails, when I cut the pins, I don't find that I need a jig. Uh, generally speaking, I stay way inside of the waist portion of the pin board, and as I come down the front and back faces, I'm just following a straight line. It's not like I'm trying to cut at a, uh, at a skewed angle the way you are when you cut the tails, so I generally just stay away from my line and come back in later and clean it up either with a chisel or often I'll use uh, a file or a rasp. You might notice here that I'm not trying to hit my line, I'm staying well inside of it on the waste portion. Um, I'm just simply not interested in messing up a project by trying to be a little too confident with my saw strokes. I've been cutting dovetails for a while. Um, and I get mixed results, usually positive, but it takes a long time to be able to get joinery straight off of the saw, and I'm not in any big rush building this anyway. Um, it's how I get my enjoyment, just taking it slow and working through the process. So if you're new to, to dovetailing, um, I would encourage the same thing. Just take your time and slowly work towards good results, and eventually speed and confidence will come. And just like with the tailboard here on the pin board, you can see that I'm just hogging that waste out with my coping saw to save myself some chiseling here later. Just like with my tailboard here on my pin board, I stay well away from my line. Make a couple passes on each side until I can no longer split the waste in half with my chisel easily. And then I drop the chisel uh, directly into that uh, marking gauge line from earlier. The major difference between chopping out the tailboard and the pinboard is here on the pinboard, you do have to be cognizant of the, uh, the angle of the inside of the pins and you might be able to tell there that I've got my chisel skewed at a slight angle towards the interior of the joint. And again, there was a good look at starting the chisel perpendicular with a tap and then slightly undercutting the angle, making sure not to go all the way through. I just want my, the travel of my chisel to go about halfway into the depth of the board and I'm using my uh, my left hand there is a break for the chisel. Now that all the chiseling's done, it's time to get our, uh, our first test fit on a joint. 
here you can see it goes together with uh, gentle mallet taps from the rubber side of my mallet. Definitely not perfect. I still have a few gaps to fill in. Um, I like to use sawdust from the project mixed with uh, just PVA wood glue and that'll cover up the majority of those gaps. But it is important to note, even if you end up with small gaps, they won't hurt the structural integrity of the project. And a hundred years ago, a craftsman working in his barn to make something for his family would have cut these same type of dovetails. They wouldn't have been perfect, but functionally, they still have 100% of their strength. And between the shape of the dovetail and the glue, you're gonna end up with a fantastic result. You can see here, I have the case assembled. Everything is square and checks out. Um, I have some filling, some sanding, and some planing to do, but all in all, I think they turned out great. So again, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned something, and I hope you're inspired to get in your shop or creative space and make something. And I really hope you'll join me for the next video. Um, hopefully we'll be doing some dado cutting and getting ready for some shelves. Thanks again.